John Aglesheim for Boating New Zealand magazine. Today we're aboard the very interesting Dreadnought 7500. Dreadnought Boats is a collaboration between naval architect Blair Lewis of Transform Marine Naval Architects and master boat builder Stuart Dorr, who owns Altec Marine. The striking looking vinyl wrapped Dreadnought D7500 is a demonstrator, but the team has several other models up to 8.5 metres on their books with the ability to offer completely custom designs at any size. All models can be built to survey with either Dreadnought D or vertical V bows. Custom options are almost unlimited. Carried on a dual axle Akron 795 trailer, the D7500 rig weighs in easily at under 3.5 tonnes. The boat was designed around a Cox 300 horsepower diesel outboard, but it is instead fitted with a Yamaha 300 horsepower petrol V6. The Yamaha is considerably lighter and cheaper than the diesel, so lead ballast and a flooding outboard pod has been added at the stern to trim the boat correctly. With a minimal bulkhead and a super wide cabin opening, the hardtop morphs seamlessly into the forward cabin with its generous full length bunks. The benefits of the vessel's long waterline length and reverse bow configuration are particularly apparent in the vast forward cabin, which would easily sleep three. It's so spacious you can lie crossways. 360 litres of fuel is housed under the cockpit sole, uh, accessible through a hatch with deep gutters draining aft over the transom. Opening the hatch also reveals some of the boat's structure, including the solid keel bar and frames at 700 spacings, and the bilges are protected by chromate paint. On the port side of the cockpit there's storage in a deck locker or seat, and in full length cockpit side shells, two 12 volt outlets are provided for electric reels, there are plenty of rod holders, a rocket launcher across the back of the hardtop overhang, twin transom doors with step through transom doors optional for sport fishers, a washdown hose and a fully featured transom bait station with a functional bait board, freshwater sink, rod holder 60 litre live well and a locker to house batteries, pumps and switches. The cockpit is raised above the waterline to be self-draining while the boat's high sides offer security, good fire support and plenty of freeboard. So I'm with Blair Lewis from Dreadnought Boats. Now tell me about the boat, it's quite unusual in, in many ways, it's certainly not a run-of-the-mill trailer boat. Um, you're the designer. Yes. And uh, what were you seeking to achieve with this boat? Just going for a good all-round family boat with a soft ride. We're trying to, um, we're not saying we're breaking the mould and doing something new because it's been done in Europe for a long time. Sure. So the name Dreadnought, I mean, to me that sort of uh, speaks of, of battleships, you know, and, but particularly of, of, a, of a bow shape that, that you uh, have adopted for this boat. What's unusual or special about that? bow shape and why have you gone down that track? It gives you a longer waterline length. Yes. You bring your anchoring gear back over the waterline. You're clumping your weights a little bit closer together. Right. Uh, your centre of dry ration. So your boat pitches less. Yes, yes. And the interior, what benefits do you, you gain from this type of design? You basically end up with a seven and a half metre boat that has the interior space of an uh, eight to eight and a half metre boat. And look, that's quite apparent with this particular vessel. It's really, really spacious uh, inside the hardtop there. I'm speaking with Stuart Dawes from Altec Marine. Stuart, you're the, you're the boat builder of this particular vessel. Um, again, uh, were there some challenges to a, a boat of this sort or is it something that uh, you've actually really enjoyed putting together? The, the bottom hull, obviously because of the shape, is quite challenging and technical. Just takes a little bit time, more time than mm -hmm. a conventional boat. Um, they're really interesting builds because they're different. We're not yes. doing the production side of things, so it's, that sort of excites you a little bit more. Now, I think that's something that when we talked about the boat earlier today, um, that you know it, it's, it's completely customizable. That you could do almost anything on on this hull. Yeah, that's right. If the customer wants to change the cabin, the height, whatever the layout he would like, uh, we can do that at the design process. So it's not hard at that time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of production boats, you pretty much get what, what you see. Right, right. The hull plates are six mil, is, is that correct? Yeah, so the bottom hull is six. Yes. The sides are five. Right. Uh, frame string is all five mil. Yeah. With rider bars. Okay, so she's obviously pretty pretty strongly built. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cheers, well it's a, it's a very interesting boat and um, we're happy to be out here on the water today and, and enjoying it. Thanks for talking to us, Stuart. Right. Thank you very much. So, what's it like on the water? Well, it's like a much bigger boat. 
The unusual dreadnought bow and super steep dead rise forward slices through head seas, with the spray peeling away from the giants to either side. We had quite a rough day to contend with, but progress was remarkably serene, especially since you don't get a true impression of the speed from the helm, because there's very little pitching and minimal banging. As with other planing hulls with the long waterline I've reviewed, the dreadnought transitions almost imperceptibly onto the plane at about 10 to 12 knots. The boat's attitude remains level throughout, and the only real indication you are planing is the changing engine note. Also apparent is a lack of squeaks and rattles from the interior. The boat is really quiet. Booming is also notably absent thanks to the vessel's comprehensive structure. It's designed to survey standards, says Lewis, which means he hasn't skimped anywhere. He reckons cheap is not the right answer. He wants his boats to not only perform well, but to also be durable. The helm position works fine, although the tall, fixed helm seat with a bolster seems a long way from the wheel at first. In reality, it turned out to be comfortable enough, and the tube foot rest on the bulkhead gives good bracing and support for the feet, although you're a long way off the floor when you're sitting on the seat. The white wheel looks smart, and the console's got plenty of space for a 12-inch Raymarine MFD, autopilot, VHF, zip wake trim tabs, Maxwell capstan controls, and Yamaha's digital display. And this boat's also equipped with Vespa AIS. In keeping with the boat's high spec level, it's fitted with Yamaha's Helm Master EX system with joystick control for low speeds and a whole range of clever functions and features for fishing and general utility. It came in handy getting the boat back on the air dock in the confined spaces of the marina with a strong crosswind. During our run, we cruised happily at between 22 and 28 knots, about 4200 RPM at 28 knots, but the boat holds the plane right down to 12 knots, which could be really useful in rough conditions. With the Yamaha 300, top speed is about 37 knots, but outright speed is not what the Dreadnought's all about. What it is about is an abundance of interior space, a remarkably composed and comfortable ride, and the ability to cover water quickly and efficiently. It might be only 7.5 metres long, 7.15 metres on the waterline, but from the inside it feels at least a metre longer, with sea keeping to match. The Dreadnought D7500 could be too radical for some, and its internal layout is still being tweaked. But with its clear advantages over many other boats of this size, could it be our boating future? Perhaps. John Ackleson from Boating New Zealand. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to our channel.